In this video, we'll use the three steps to sketch method to graph a shifted cosine graph. Y equals two cosine of three X minus pi minus one. So we can clearly see the shifts here. We see in the input of the function, the three X minus pi. Um, so we see we have a C term and then also the minus one at the end of the equation. So before we jump into the method, let's go ahead and apply our sort of tip to factor out the term B. That's that three in front of the X. And we're gonna do this so that we can clearly see the phase shift. All right, we have Y equals two cosine. All right, let's pull out that three. So we're left with X minus pi over three. And then we have, of course, still the minus one. So writing it like this, we can see the phase shift is not pi. The phase shift is actually pi over three. So we'll be moving this function to the right pi over three units when we're using our, our particular method. Um, you could also find the phase shift by calculating C over B. So pi is C, three is B. You'd get the same result. But writing it in this factored out form makes it really clear, and I think that we're less likely to make a mistake. All right. Let's move into our method. So we have our template here on the left and our equation and grid on the right. We have talked about our equation is in that general form of a shifted cosine equation, A cosine bx minus c plus d. And on the screen, I went ahead and put the factored out version of the equation that we started with. All right, so we will work from here and start with step one. Let's find the essentials. Let's break down all of our information so we are really setting ourselves up for success. All right, looking, we see that A is going to be two. So our amplitude is two. Our graph is vertically stretched from the parent function cosine X by a factor of two. All right, and then we see B is the coefficient of X, it's three. So that tells us two things. First, it tells us three cycles of cosine will happen between zero and two pi for this equation. And it can also help us find the period so we find the period calculating two pi divided by B. So our period here is two pi divided by three. All right, and remember period is the length of one horizontal cycle. So that goes hand in hand with what we were saying earlier about B, that three cycles will happen between zero and two pi. So that's three times of two pi over three. All right, so we have that information broken down. Let's go ahead and choose how we're going to label our scales, our axes. Um, so we have purposely designed with this method a way that all of our key points will align with how we have our tick marks labeled. So to get this to happen for our horizontal scale, we're going to take the period and divide it by four. Okay, so we have two pi over three divided by four. That's the same thing as multiplying by one fourth. That's sometimes a little easier to look at. Um, so you can cross cancel or just multiply across. You get two pi over 12 or pi over six as your, your scale. All right, and so again, this breaks our pattern down into four equal pieces, our period into four equal pieces so that those points will line up nicely. For our vertical scale, we'll use one. Okay, one typically works. You could look at A and count by twos if you wanted. Um, it's just a personal preference. So let's go ahead and label our axes. So horizontally, we're counting by pi over six. So one pi over six, two pi over six reduces to pi over three, three pi over six reduces to pi over two, and four pi over six. Stop here, double check. With this setup, with this method, the fourth tick mark to the right of the origin should match your period. It does, so we feel confident we're on the right track. All right, let's keep labeling. We have five pi over six, six pi over six, seven pi over six, eight pi over six, which reduces to four pi over three. All right, so take a moment, 
labeled the negative side of the horizontal axis too, all the same values, just negative. All right, so here we have it labeled. And let's label our vertical axis counting by ones. Easy enough. Okay, our final part of step one, let's identify our shifts. Okay, and we intentionally designed this with factoring out that B term so that we see our phase shift right here. It's pi over three. So we'll be moving to the right pi over three. Okay, if you don't like that factoring out, you can just work from the original and simply calculate C divided by B. Um, just be careful of that sign. Okay, so this again, let's write ourselves a reminder, we're moving to the right pi over three units. Okay, and notice on our graph, because we've been labeling by pi over six on our horizontal axis, this will be two grid units, okay, would be equivalent to pi over three. All right, and then our shift vertically is down one, that negative one at the end, um, that D term. All right, so we have all our information gathered, organized, analyzed. We are ready to start graphing. So let's move into step two. Let's plot our base pattern. Remember, we want to do this lightly or in a different color ink because this is not our final graph. We'll tackle the shifts in step three, um, but this is just our base pattern. Uh, really, this will be if we were graphing the simpler equation, two cosine three X is what we're doing here. So we're doing pre-shift work. All right, know our cosine base pattern is maximum zero, minimum zero. We know that we do not have a vertical reflection here, so we're gonna stick with that. And let's go ahead and plot our first point in the base pattern. Again, remembering to do this lightly. So our first point is going to be a maximum for now on the y-axis, it'll have a y-coordinate of a. So that point should be here at zero, two. Okay, moving over, our next point will have an x-coordinate at the first tick mark, so pi over six, and it's going to be on the x-axis because it's a zero or an x-intercept. Okay, our next point in the pattern will happen at the next horizontal tick mark to the right at pi over three, and its y-coordinate will just be the opposite of a. It's going to be our minimum. All right, so negative two. And then our final point in the pattern will happen at the third horizontal tick mark and it's another zero, so at pi over two. All right, let's finish it out starting the repeat. Let's just put that point to finish up the cycle and start the next one. It's another maximum at two pi over three. And now we're ready to move into step three and take care of our shifting. Okay, so in step three, we shift, sketch, repeat. Our shifts, we can really do at the same time. We're going to move each of these green intermediate points from our base pattern in step two, and we're gonna move them right pi over three and down one. Okay, so again, pi over three is equal to two grid units horizontally here. Okay, and we counted by ones vertically. So starting with our y-intercept, let's move right pi over three, and I'll do dash marks just so we can see that. Okay, right pi over three, and down one. And we'll do that for each of our green points. And as we find those final points, we can make them a little bigger or darker so we know these are our final points. Okay, right pi over three for the next one, down one. Right pi over three, down one. All right, going all the way through for each of them, right pi over three, down one. You're, you should see the shape of your graph remaining the same uh, it is just shifting right and down. Okay, so we've tackled the shifts. They really are not that much more difficult than our unshifted graphs, especially when we've organized them like we did in step one. All right, so now we can sketch. We have our typical cosine curve here. All right, and here is one cycle of our graph. Let's go ahead and repeat this. Okay, so moving, we'll do just a few points to the right, as much space as we have. Okay, you do see your midline shifted here. The vertical shift down one um, changes that. So what were x-intercepts, I'm now going to call midline points. So we'll have a midline point and a minimum. Okay, so we can continue the curve 
in this direction, turn it back up to show it continues in the typical pattern. And let's work to the left a little bit. So we'll work backward for this one. We'll have a midline point, a minimum, a midline point, a maximum. And just let's keep on going. So once you get used to this pattern and once you have one cycle, you are really just repeating the pattern over and over again. All right, so we have here several more cycles of cosine. Actually, ends up being kind of fun once you get the hang of it. All right, so there you have it. Um, we didn't actually go all the way to two pi. We did not have enough space on this grid, but hopefully you can see, going back to B equaling three, hopefully you can see we would have one full cycle, two full cycles, and if we went another two pi over three to the right, we would end up with three full cycles between zero to two pi. So I just like to tie that in typically at the end. It's just another way to double check um, that the graph that we've produced is the one that we actually want. So what ended up, uh, or what seemed like maybe a very complicated graph ended up being not too bad at all uh, when we use our method and we really stick to these steps. Um, if you want more examples, check out the link in the video description. Um, there's more cosine, more sine, more tangent, um, lots of other trig examples. So check those out and good luck.